I am unashamed. What about you? The first thing in the book of Acts, the, by verse 3, he's talking about the kingdom, and the last verse in the book of Acts, he boldly and without hindrance, he preached the kingdom of God. I mean, what does it mean if somebody's saying it's not here? I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> five, look, less than 5% of the world's Christianity believe the kingdom of God's here. They don't mm -hmm. think it's here. Still waiting. Huh? Still waiting on it. Still waiting on it. <laughs> He's going to hand it over, the apostle Paul said, to God when he comes. They're waiting on him to set it up. Yep. He's already set it up. Well, they're you in just good, wouldn't think well, people. But, they, but they're in good company because the people that were there at the beginning didn't quite get it either. We don't want to jam it in their face, but we need to keep bringing that up. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of, you're seeing the kingdom of God here. Well, you're bringing it up. <laughs> Same message. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's here. It's here. Jesus oh, said it was near. I say it's here. It, oh, come come be a that's part That's the of only it. difference in the terminology. Instead of we saying it's near, we're saying it's here. It, we're showing when it came. <clears throat> well, the kingdom of God is bigger than even us collected as, as people who possess the Holy Spirit of God. It's it's bigger. God is so big, it the mind can't really comprehend. When you start looking at the cosmos and his other beings, about you're, talking about, you're talking about it's angels, the kingdom I mean, of God. We're just a part of that through His Spirit. Yep. And when we, you know, Romans eight, get our redemption of our bodies, then we'll we'll learn a little well, more. Sort of, it's sort of like the. We were a part of the kingdom of Great Britain. We were one of their colonies. Yep. And then they had them all over the world. They're in India, yep. North Africa. And so just kind of the same way, Jess. You had all these different people. And at the time, they were the, you know, they were the top dog, I guess, in, in the world. Mm -hmm. Then we had a revolution and started our own thing. But it's the same thing. The kingdom is broad, you know. But some people are just, because of all the disappointments in our world and all the imperfections and oh no you know look who's in control and the government power and people just can't believe in all the the crime and sin that there's something anything good yeah. here and whatever and, and i think they get it from verses like when we read in chapter three in 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 peter's sermon in that verse where was it 21 when he said he was talking about jesus he said he must remain in heaven which is where he, he was at at the time he had just left in chapter one until the time comes for god to restore everything so when a person reads that they're like see that's when they're going to set up the kingdom and they go through the peter at the pearly gates and i mean i i, I have numerous people tell me that in in jest and in various things, right. they're like, well, Peter's at the, at the pearly gate. He, he opened the gate. Acts 2 is pretty clear on that. Mm -hmm. the, if he had the keys Christ and it was based on Jesus being Lord and he now proclaimed Jesus as Lord as Jesus had just left. So I come down to this. If we're all waiting for this to happen, why are we here? I think that's a profound question. Mm -hmm. It is. Because when you read the book of Acts, what would you say if you summed it up? Why are they here on in their generation? Why were they there from Acts chapter 2 all the way to the end? Why would you say every main character and person mentioned, why were they here? To, to present the king of the uh, cosmos... To the world, yeah, and the good news regarding that remission of sin and those who responded, resurrection from the dead, right. and those who responded were now part of the kingdom of heaven on earth. That's it, right? So it will it will endure forever. Yeah. That's why that's why Daniel made sure in the days of the kingdom of iron, yeah, partly mixed with clay, God will set up His kingdom. 
which will endure forever. It will last forever. Because yeah, uh, man-made kingdoms rise and fall, rise and fall. Well, he like just got through saying. The, the confusing part is this that concept of restoration. But it, it, Jesus was very clear about it. If you were in John 5, yeah. that that's about, that's about the eternal connection for all of us. I mean, that's what the great resurrection is all about. It's yep. about facing, you know, who you are. You're either you're yeah. either a follower of Christ or you're not, you know. But even look, even just to make this in a practical silly illustration, there's a there's part of our duck hunting fraternity that we go with every day that no matter what happens, they tend to be a little negative and they're like, "Boy, you know, why aren't they here? Why it's like it never is is perfect yep. because duck hunting in and of itself is an imperfect mission. We go every day, but it never just, the stars never align. <laughs> well, we go this morning, you which is... glimpses of it. We have glimpses. So this morning, it was just overwhelming that whatever we've been trying to pull off, <laughs> it was literally like it was a dream. But I heard and it was easy. Uh, they, there were ducks just by the hundreds flying around. They were coming in our decoy. The hunt lasted not very long, less than an hour. But I heard Jay as we were leaving say, "Yeah, but we're gonna get them tomorrow." And I was thinking, <laughs> "The kingdom is here. You you just experienced the kingdom of ducks just happened." I. I I don't even want to think about whatever tomorrow. happens it's tomorrow. It's, right now, it's just happening. On your way back, even though the hunt is up, this <laughs> bask in it. That was why we duck hunt, even though it's hard to see it in, in you know the long term, in the short term, because there's always filled with frustration. It's never. That's why we like to do it. But I was just making that illustration. It people think, well, this just can't be it because we're all flawed. The world is imperfect. Like, yep, when God gives you his spirit, you are now a part of the kingdom of heaven. Now granted, there's gonna be there's gonna be an instance when he comes back where you change to go from perishable to imperishable. Yep. So there's well people say, Well, that's when the kingdom is is really, you know, takes on its its beginning, but that's why I said it's bigger than that. You know, God is not bound by time, and it's impossible for him to lie. And so when he said the promise of you getting the Holy Spirit is is for you and their generation and their generation and their generation, I just believe it happened yeah. right there. Despite our flaws, he uses us. So then they all were sent out, and there's no different 2,000 years later, no matter what's going on, corruption, government, evil, we're still speaking, saying it's here. You can same be a part message, of it. Same response, same individual, <clears throat> gospel yeah. of the kingdom of Christ. We preach Christ, him crucified, raised from the dead. You're like, if you, if, if you believe that, and by faith, over and over in the book of Acts, they preach the gospel. What do we do? Repent and be baptized. And then that's what they did. And somebody says... Is it? You think it's that simple? It's that simple, Val. It is, and, and you know it's a long term play too. When it's your life, I had an interesting uh, yesterday on the podcast. I was <coughs> y- y'all didn't say anything about, it, but I was dressed up more than I would normally be for the unashamed lair, especially you know, comparatively uh, to coming from a hunt. And the reason why was because I was speaking at a funeral, and it was a young man, um, thirty three years old. Basically got into some bad lifestyle choices and just wore his body out at 33. And he's a kid that we all helped raise. You know, his family, they were very active at our church for a long time. And then they just kind of drifted away, which happens a lot of times. But I noticed yesterday, it's interesting about this idea of a forever family. Because when their, when their son uh, passed away, they didn't have anybody to reach out to. And so, you know, because we hadn't seen them in several years. Mm -hmm. And who did they reach out to? The family that brought them into the kingdom years and years ago. So I thought it was interesting. And they were so appreciative yesterday because Mike and I spoke at the funeral. And we talked about love and we talked about hope. 
We talked about comfort. We talked about what this means, about God being bigger than we are, about grace and mercy, and all the things you would want to hear when you're in a really tough situation. And I think it's at moments like that, <clears throat> you think we think about it, Christianity in general and the kingdom of God, the hard times are where you usually people look back and say, we, we want to get this thing right. We want to get our lives right. We want to look mm-hmm. back. And people lose their way, you know? And, yeah, and, and it, it, it was powerful yesterday because I just thought, really, it is a forever play. And that's why you got to always be there for folks. I mean, you know, people mess mm-hmm. up. People but fall you, short. You see the same thing happening in Acts 4, which is where we're at. I mean, it all started with a healing and then a presentation of Jesus, a declaration, as Phil is alluding to, that, the kingdom of God is here on earth and it? the spirit lives in people. And so all of a sudden people are threatened by this. They're still threatened by it. Yep. It, it makes them nervous when you start talking about resurrection, Jesus, changing Perfect lifestyle, yeah. behavior. Who in the world is that? <laughs> Somebody's pulling, Somebody's pulling in there. <laughs> I had a friend one time said, get her done. <laughs> so, <laughs> So what I wanted to bring out, though, is they put them in prison, and then this, which we'll get into it in detail, this spirit of boldness comes out, mm-hmm. as in, and, and and the whole goal is to get them from the from the culture is for them to shut up, right? Shut it down, <laughs> and it's you talk about freedom of speech. You would think that would be a thing back then. You would think it would be a thing now. And you have freedom of speech here unless you're sharing Jesus <laughs> at a school or in a store or it, it and they say, Well yeah, I mean you're free to do it, but not you can't go in the middle of whatever and do this. That's always the illustration mm-hmm. that, that well, they, the, the, they use. The new- a, it is so remote. <laughs> from the current pervasive ideology, mm-hmm. it is so far beyond that. They w- they're saying the poor souls actually believe that junk. That's right. Mm-hmm. They they look at us as pathetic. Why well, to, I, I, to put our faith in a in a God we've never seen? Right. We just <clears throat> we have His acts, the acts of God through the apostles and his interaction with the human race in the book of Acts. He gives them one act after the other, whether it be the the pouring out of the Spirit, the raising the dead, we're going to find out in a little bit, and, you know, the healing of people, and then they're like, whoa. So, but still, he finally had to say, you know, when it came to its own people, the Jews in Acts 2, and Peter, a Jew, gets up, they all were Jews, and Ali finally had to say, "You know what? We're going to the Gentiles. We're going. We're we're going to the Gentiles. It's just for everybody. Right. But at least they they'll listen. Y'all are hard headed, stiff necked, Stephen. Now they killed him. You see what I'm saying? Well, and that's when it finally took off. Let's let's take a break. So, Jace, I was excited today because the uh, Omega XL <sighs> folks. I uh, sent yeah. a special package to you. I guess they've been hearing you it's, talk about it. Me and Dad are always talking about how much it's helped us, and Jace well, keeps talking about his aches and pains. So I guess the good folks at Omega I, said, I, well, I guess we're going to have to send him some I'm stuff. going on, not quite yet, but 75 years old. That, I'm on that, a week that, 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 every that day. Pristine waters in New Zealand <laughs> is coming out with some fine. I'm sawing up a tree this big around for my neighbor because I love my neighbor <laughs> every day for the last week. I have sawed and chopped. And that's on top of duck hunting. So I know you got so some information. I have going a on. little bit of information. Right, well, so so you can try. start taking those and let me know. Our, our good buddy Jack uh, Cornette from our church told me he's been taking it two weeks. So I said, well, let me know how, how you do with it, Jack. So anyway, um, Omega XL, basically it, it helps with the inflammation, which takes away the pain. Dad and I both love it. Uh, we're trying to get mom on it as well. So here's what you do. You go to Omega XL dot com slash fill you buy one bottle you get the second bottle free which is great it's a great way to get started omega xl.com slash fill or you can call them 800-844-4888 that's 800-844-4888 
So, by the way, there's always been persecution and suffering for the ones who proclaim the kingdom of God, and things have not changed one bit. Well, here's why I think we have to realize what Jace was talking about a minute ago. <clears throat> what started now with this kind of latest censorship, cancer cult, cancel culture, you know, however you want to frame it, is it started with obviously Trumpism, you know, because it was about all about Trump and his followers. But but, the, but they've been doing this for well they every, have every and, and that's my point and the here's but here's the latest here's the line that they're using that's why it's coming for us at some point because here's what they'll say you can't have a spread of misinformation that's the line I keep hearing misinformation and I thought about that and I thought well who determines what's information that's worthy of passing on. And what's misinformation? Do you believe when we start talking about resurrection, you know, faith and a God, we, we, he's invisible? They, they scowl at that. Uh, sure they will. But and you so, know what? They scowl at it in the book of Acts. Exactly. So what I'm saying is even in the current culture, I don't see this getting better in terms of what we're talking about, being more free to be able to talk about these mm-hmm. things. I mean, it's it's been lessening in our culture for a pretty good while now. Yeah. I mean, it, it, we talked about it before on college campuses, you know, school campuses, what you mentioned a minute ago. So it's mm-hmm. it's a real deal, just like what we're seeing in Acts 4. There's no doubt. I think there's a blueprint for how we should function here in Chapter 4 as Christians because, to me, there's no difference in what was going on there and what's happening here. Very little. In, in, in verse 21 of Chapter 4, they threatened them because they couldn't figure out how to punish them. You know, I, I know why they couldn't figure that out because they hadn't done anything wrong. They were, <laughs> and, and from the opposition, from their perspective, can you imagine standing before God when this is all over and you literally were shutting down the proclamation of the Creator of the universe, <laughs> yeah. and you stand up there for God? So I got. I want to say this for everyone who has not embraced Jesus or or at least entertained that idea, you need to stop and make sure that you're not hindering the creator of the universe from, from doing his work. And the way to do that is to ask a simple question. What if this is really true, what they're saying? Because they heard what they were saying, but they weren't thinking, what if this is true? What if there actually is a God who was a human and he he did come down here and, and paid for my sins and was resurrected. That's what gets lost in this. We hear this and say, yeah, but all these people, they're doing the exact opposite. They're saying, shut it down. They're not asking the question, what if it's true? Because if, they, if look, they ask that question, they fall down on their yeah, knees. And on top of that, it's by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Acts 4, verse 10, whom you crucified but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you completely healed. He said, this is the kind of power that's available to you. Uh, see this dude? Y'all, y'all know him. Well, he's been healed. He, Jesus, is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the capstone. Salvation is found in no one, no one else, for there is no other name under heaven Given to men by which we must be saved. This is the I think that's what got them in trouble. When they saw the (laughs) courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished. They're like, how did this bunch of fishermen come in here and telling us about the cosmos and the, the eternal? They took note that these men had been with Jesus. Well... Since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. They were like, they looked at the guy and they like, God was showing them, can you do this? They were like, well, they, they pulled this thing up. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then conferred together. What are we going to do with these men? They asked. Everybody living in Jerusalem knows they've done an outstanding miracle, and we can't deny it. (laughs) Someone says, all I need is a miracle, and that'll do it. Nope. Well, they didn't do it here. But to stop this thing, (laughs) I like the fact that the preaching of the kingdom of God and Jesus is called this thing. (laughs) To stop (laughs) this thing. But if you looked looked in modern-day America, 
that's exactly the way this 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 uh, narrative and this Karl Marxism mm -hmm. and socialism and this what they call left wing they get into all that that's exactly where they are to stop this thing from spreading and further any further among the people we must warn these men to speak no longer and anyone in his name so you can say what you want to about the cancel culture or oh, they're trying to stop a simple message Jesus him crucified, buried, and raised from the dead. And it was there 2,000 years ago, and they were catching a lot of trouble, and all these apostles. Then they called the men together, Peter and all of them, and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. I they're love, trying, they I have the freedom of speech in a big way, and, I love that and they, nothing has yeah. changed. I love that they thought all they got to do is tell them to quit doing it, and that was it. Yeah, I'll yeah. Make That's a how we wrap this up. Now that we, because when we had the conversation of the revolving signs, that we now put this thing. <laughs> this I mean, that's a bumper sticker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, right. We got to, the, we got to stop this thing from spreading. <laughs> this thing. What are you guys a part of? The thing. Yeah, I guarantee you, someone, thing. some spiritual person out there will make a thing out of this thing. Oh, they will. This is look. It, this need is going to wind up on a t-shirt. <laughs> you know, the t-shirt needs to say, "I'm part of I'm the part thing." Of the thing. <laughs> This thing. <laughs> this thing. I'm part of Who this, you thing. this thing. Who are you That's the shirt. Well, and look, so. They say Carl Marx, maybe he should. No, I don't know who <laughs> no, that is. He's just no, some simple guy. This is, this is let me tell you about movement. this thing. Yeah. This thing. So, so it's the same people, but think about it. Jace was right. These same people, they had, they had done this same thing with Jesus. They didn't have any answer for him. Remember? No. He, he stood didn't. before him. Who do you think you are? You you're, you know you if you don't believe what I'm saying, at least believe the miracles. So so they so they turn him over to Pilate. They crucify him. They think, all right, that's the end of that problem. We don't have to worry about the thing which he'd already said because was going to happen. That, exactly because that's what people in charge do. <laughs> they true. first they make threats, just like they did. Yep. Then they do warnings, which that's in there. At, but at some point, these threats no longer were threats that's right. because that's what abusers do. They use violence. Yep. And death. To control nations and worlds. That's right. It gets down to who has the biggest gun. That's right. It was the biggest club. That's now why the Apostle Paul brought up in Acts chapter, I mean, uh, in Romans chapter 10. Not all the Israelites, uh, well, let's see, uh, verse 15. How can they preach unless they are sent, as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. There's the apostles in the book of Acts. But not all the Israelites are accepted the good news, the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who's believed their message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. That's all these apostles were trying to do, and they're trying to shut them up. Fast forward 2,000 years, and we say to the, 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 the cancer crowd, all we're doing is pointing people to Jesus, mm -hmm. possibly the epitome of love, what possible problem could you have with that? We're just telling them, you know, to love God and love each other. What, what about that? Is you you want to shut that up? Right. Love your God and your neighbor. And they're like, well, you know, it doesn't agree with the narrative. See, right. they said, no, no, no. Where and you're painted as a as you're painted as a person who has no flexibility, who can't fit into society, who's you're rigid. You're trying to tell people how to live. And it's so funny because... They're mad and don't know why. Well, right. They're so angry and bitter. I mean, and we're like, we got the answer to that. I mean, I'm not angry or bitter about anything. Are you, Jay? No. <laughs> I mean, well, I think what they did was the way to, to go back to that blueprint of how you respond. So they threatened them. Well, Peter and John, they went back to their own people and said, hey... We got we got a stir. We're, <laughs> it was a positive thing mm -hmm. that it was such a big stir. If you if you want to mess up what's going on in a good way, and you get people stirred up, persecution is going to follow. But I like how they responded. <clears throat> it says, "When the people heard this in verse twenty four, they raised their voices together in prayer to God, Sovereign Lord." They said, you made the heaven and the earth and the sea 
and everything in them, which is the same problem in our world today. It comes back to that question. People say, shut up. Why? Because we don't believe God made the world and everything. And we're like, well, we do. And since your belief system doesn't have an exit strategy at all, and they, they can't deny that, just like they couldn't deny the miracles, we have just plain rationale and logic that they can't deny. What's amazing can't is... Can't deny that. Hang, hang, on, down that, a hang on, Dan. Let's take a quick break. So our friends at uh, Bespoke Post, they've done it again this winter. they got a whole new lineup, uh, and I love their, their stuff, Jace. It's called A Box of Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a good name, right? And it's basically different kind of gifts that they send you. You sign up for this thing, and they come in. I love getting my box uh, and find out what's in it. You know, it's got all sorts of stuff that you're going to love. So here's what you do. You go to boxofawesome.com. And then you're going to basically answer some questions. They kind of find out what you like. You know, some people are more, you know, they like a pocket knife. This person over here likes cologne. This person, you know, different kind of men's gifts is what we're talking about. And then they're going to send you some cool stuff every month. It's free to sign up. You can skip a month. You can cancel any time. Each box costs $45, but it has over $70 worth of gear inside. And this is some really cool stuff. I love what they send me. So here's what you do, and you get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com. Best website name ever, boxofawesome.com. Enter the code FEEL when you check out. So it's boxofawesome.com, code FEEL, get 20% off. What's amazing, Al, you get down to Acts 421. After further threats, this uh, is the powers that be, an entrenched group of... Uh, well, read, read verse 19 first, what, what, what they told them when they said yeah. you can't talk Peter anymore. and John replied, judge for yourselves whether it is right to, in God's sight to obey you <laughs> rather than God. I love, love that. That's so for awesome. we cannot help speaking about what we've seen and heard. Any, mm. after further threats, check this logic out, Jace. They let them go. They could not decide... How to punish him? Yeah, because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over forty years old. They, Which means so, that everybody so said, had seen him laying there. How for do we years? shut this bunch down? They okay. They got a miracle going here. This guy, he's standing there. He's fine. But they said, "What? How, why do we deal with him?" That's about where we are now. Yeah. They look at us and they but say, it, Phil, it's the same thing. Uh, the last podcast I brought up Tebow, you know, they, they'll they say, because I've heard them on, you know, whatever, sporting events or broadcasting, they'll say, well, you know, he, he's a he's a good human being. Because <laughs> it's undeniable. I mean, the guys out there helping those who can't help themselves on a daily basis, kids with special needs and this – the shining, I think they're calling it shining through. It was night to shine. I mean, he's taking all of these challenged young people and giving them like a prom and, and putting them on display in the vein of this statement that we're made by God. You made the heaven and the earth <clears throat> and us and everybody in it. So they can't deny the acts, but they just don't like it. You know, and they, you, they they just don't like they can't help it. And you know, you know how you know that's true because how many honors did he ever get? I mean, he won the Heisman Trophy. But I'm saying, how many honors did he get for his lifestyle and all the people he helps? I mean, how many did he get the ESPN Person of the Year? You know, they'll yeah, they'll off the field award. Yeah, they'll I'm honor like, they'll honor the one who was Bruce Jenner becomes a Caitlyn or whatever Jenner. Person of the year, All courage, right. boldness. Right. Look, you know. So the sporting world—that's what, and it's any of us, entertainment, all of it. You don't honor people who are godly. Never. Only people who do ungodly things. I mean, you rarely see it honored. Sometimes you know you'll see. Yeah, Walter and so, Payton, yeah. And there's the some year. things that are done that that they honor that is coming from the same place, an act of love or. But you're right, Al. I mean, we, we know their family well. I mean, it's a daily basis of trying to make society better, whether you believe in God or not. Right. He's actively, you know, but it's coming from this place that all people are made by God and they're special. Yeah. 
and so he believes that and lives that. But is he persecuted? Of course. Yep. Are we the same thing? Just like us. And a lot of people laughed at our little duck <laughs> show until they realized that we love Jesus. Until they got to know us. <laughs> well, they said, well, we're not watching. That's you know, not- everybody can watch you till they find out what you believe. And then that's what they have to make a decision whether they're going to keep following you or not. That's what happens. That's what I think happens. that's why that so many people did follow us early is because we seem like normal people who believe the Bible, and they were like, man, well, it's glad to see somebody like that on TV. You people know? like to laugh. It, we have it, one it, thing in our favor, boys. Psalms 1, why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand, and the rulers gather together, gather against the Lord and against his anointed one. Let us break their chains, they say, and throw off their fetters. The one enthroned in heaven, Al, this is the good news, laughs. <laughs> the God in heaven. People don't think that God's got a sense of humor. When they go against him, he laughs. He laughs. Then he rebukes, he scoffs at them. Then he rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath. So you end it all up by saying, uh, kiss the son. This is Psalms 1. Lest he be angry and you will be destroyed in your way. For his wrath, we're talking about Jesus Christ, can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. I'm taking refuge with Jesus Christ. Yeah, and you yeah. go against him, you better be careful is all I can tell you because you will be destroyed in your way. He's going to take yeah. care of business, Al. Well, and you know, the, what's interesting about this is if you look at the timeline, especially of Peter, and we've talked about this before, so in John 20, because this is, this is two months, time, this a little amount of time from when Jesus left. He's, in John 21, he's reinstated sort of back in the fold because mm-hmm. of you know his denial of Jesus. Acts 1, he stands up among the what little group of believers. Acts chapter 2, he stands up for the first time and presents you know in public. Mm-hmm. But that's a, that's a sympathetic audience because once he got to talking to them, they were like, what do we do? Well, now we get to Acts 4. In Acts 3 and 4, he's, now he's in full opposition Mm-hmm. He's speaking truth you to power. You can't underestimate the power of the evil one, too. He That's right. Some... Well, <laughs> but I just we find can't... that fascinating. That that happened, Jace, over a two or three month period. I mean, no doubt. Peter is it rolling. is spiritual warfare. It but is. it was it's all to shut you down. I mean, look, I, I'm gonna be honest. Us studying this has inspired me to be more vocal, just in public. I was at the grocery store what two days ago. I'm at the deli counter. The woman behind the counter is African American, and I was wondering how you pronounced her first name because it was, it was perplexing to me. But I noticed her last name was King, and but I just I said, "How do you pronounce your first name?" And she said, "And I said, well, your last name caught my attention because we just had Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, day, day, yeah. and I said, I, I didn't know you may be." <laughs> you know, so she's like, I'm not Ken Martin Luther King. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but when she said that, kind of laughing, yeah. like, I said, you know what I really like about him? I said, he brought people together peacefully in Jesus. And she went, mm-hmm. Well, there, I didn't realize this, but during our conversation, a crowd had gathered because. I think one people recognized who I was. I had a mask on, but you know, it's hard to put, it's I, hard to I keep all a, that under. I a have mask. a bit of an accent here, and when I start talking about Jesus, you know, the crowd gathered. Ax- so crowd, crowds came together when Peter yeah, and were talking. That's exactly to right. So an elder, Deli counter, an, whatever. An elderly uh, Caucasian gentleman stepped forth, and he said, "Well, what brings people together?" And then the next two minutes. I have no idea what he was talking about. He went through billions of years of archaeology, and we had found the missing links. And so I was like, okay, (laughs) what am I going to say in response to this? I said, so you're saying we all came from the same place? He said, yep. I said, well, looky there. We, We agree. 
I said, isn't that something? And so, because I thought, I came at it from, I'd already talked about Jesus, but he was promoting unity. We're having a conversation, and everybody's here. And then I just had to say at the end, I said, but you know, it's just something about gathering together in Jesus as a forever family. I'm looking toward the future, because he was talking about the past. Right. And I was thinking, I just wanted to plant that little seed. <laughs> So when I turned around, I got my, I got that uh, peppered turkey. I got my peppered turkey. Uh, Mrs. King was smiling now. We, we, we threw the mask. You out, bonded. Because we mentioned Jesus, and me and her was on the same page. And this fellow, look, it was promoting unity because he was basically, which is fine. Yeah. And we're sharing Jesus. But as I walked by, there was an uh, elderly white woman there, and she said, that was beautiful. Did she whisper? Yeah, she whispered it. But I thought, you know, we had a moment here. Let's take another break. (laughs) So you had every group represented there in this little... Well, we had onlookers that didn't sell words. So the man was going back to the we're all one race. He he was... I think he was trying to be encouraging. Yeah. But saying. he was not doing it. He he did it from a purely scientific, yeah. secular, uh, secular view. It's like he may he, not have been everything he said. I didn't believe, but his he didn't seem mad that I had mentioned Jesus, and then he was promoting that we all came from the same place, which so we I was all like, agree. You know what? I agree with that because <laughs> <laughs> that's a Bible. Message. Because he was saying there's no sense in us. Because I had said he brought people together. Yeah. And I think I had said something. I think I used my line like a deer. I said, I'm a, I'm a guy from the outdoors. I said, I'm like a deer. And they all looked around and said, I'm colorblind. <laughs> and a couple chuckles, you know. But so he, you know, I was saying this, all this tension among races. I was think, thinking that nobody did it better, in my opinion, than Martin Luther King Jr. Great. Sure, sharing Jesus it was also. I mean, you read quote after quote. His primary goal was to share Jesus. Everything else happened, but when you know you read a lot of his quotes, you really see. Well, that. when you read that letter, remember, Dad, you read it in the Birmingham jail. <laughs> you were literally in the jail cell. Sure did. Uh, I used to have a quote I carried <laughs> around in my, in my old Bible, the or the one before this. That was basically it was saying, if I die. I want to be remembered, and it was, you know, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have one of the brothers, Sammy, uh, get together and made a little box in a little building down there. He rented. Yep. And it's where people. He trains come boxers. He yeah. trains boxers, and he learned how to box and all that, serving in Angola for about twenty something years That's for a carjacking. But he was yeah. converted to Jesus inside prison down there in Angola. Finally, gets out. So I, you know, I helped him get on his feet about a little boxing arena down there. You know, you know, I helped finance the, the pop, 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 you know, all these <laughs> things they got. You know, but uh, one of them yesterday that came out of that program turned his life over to Jesus because he's teaching them how to box and he's points them to Jesus. So yesterday there was awesome. one there. You know, there's a couple of them, and yeah. uh, and well, some my- guy from Florida <laughs> came up because he said, "Okay, you got me." I, I drove all the way up here. He said, I, I missed it. He said, I, you know. He said, some, somebody said they sprinkled me as a baby, but I don't even remember it. He said, but I've done a lot of sinning since since that event, that's for sure. So yeah. we, I just told him about Jesus, you know. Right. So he was one of the ones who was born again, as they say. When to both of the points, your grocery store deal, the deli counter, as well as this, it's just yeah. it's day-to-day living, you know what I'm saying? Well, it's it just... is, but but this <laughs> studying act, because look, all I was saying is it's dangerous to do that, though. Because I don't know, you know, you could have had somebody who got offended, and you would think here we are in the Bible Belt, that wouldn't happen, but, I mean, his comments were a little weird. I mean, because like, I, I literally... He he just went on a, a speech that was way over my head. I mean, it just... <laughs> but there but, was no Jesus in it. No Jesus. No. Because he was like, well, what happened? But he just... We're having a conversation, and he just inserted himself, which was fine. Yeah. But I thought about... Well, you opened the door, so he thought, I'll just jump in here, too. I thought about this when we read it before you know, we started talking today. When... 
when Peter gets in his speech here, he gets down to about 27, and he, he brings up, indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the, and the people of Israel and the city to conspire against your holy servant, Jesus. So he, he gets back to Jesus, but he mentions those who were in opposition to Jesus. But I love this, this quote. It says, They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats, enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. And so I was just going back to that kind of blueprint of how we, we handle it. We share Jesus. We share what happened when we share Jesus with people who love Jesus. That, that's where we get encouragement. It's like just you just now sharing about what happened yesterday. Yep. That's encouraging to me because I'm like, this is what God is using us to do. And you say, well, what about those who oppose us? Even God uses those who oppose us a lot of times to glorify Jesus, whether they meant to or not. I mean, I feel like this fella coming in because for everyone on looking, it was a come together moment instead of, uh, hey, I hate you. You know, where's my turkey? Well, you, you know, you're looking at me weird. What you? I mean, that's what our culture is so sensitive now. Mm. Anything you say, people are like, what, what did you say? And I mean, I'm scared to even use the phrases that in our culture. Let's take one last break. So, Jace, it's interesting you, you brought that up because historically, the Bible says this about about uh, Herod and Pilate. That if you study history, you know they had been opposed to each other the whole time that the Romans were there until Jesus. And then they were thick as thieves after that. Jesus actually unified the enemies of God as well because from that point forward, they were unified trying to shut the church down yep. in the first century. So it's really interesting. Even the opposition, even the satanic forces unify against. So, so it's interesting that Jesus not only brings unity among believers, Mm-hmm. But even among unbelievers, because that's what you're seeing today. Look at all these tech companies that are lining up. For, they should be competitors. Yep. Instead, they're all joining forces <laughs> to shut down, you know, yep. what they call the right wing extremist, you know, yep. which is which they, we're in that. Camp. Well, and they're just looking around for anything <clears throat> sensitive. Well, like that, you said, I mean, we, you, you know, you had a football team, the Washington Redskins. And they're like, well, that's offensive. But if you go get sunburned and say, boy, I've got red skin here. People, oh, 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 oh. What are you yeah. saying? <laughs> well, your skin's red. Well, that's offensive. Yeah, like, problem- well, I was out in the sun and I got, <laughs> yeah. there was no offense. Somebody, the other day I told Missy, I was like, get some of that Aunt Jemima, uh syrup. She said, you can't say that anymore. <laughs> I said, what? I thought it was a person's name. They're like, no, it's it ain't your mama. <laughs> Plus, I, it, I, I never got it in it, the first place. It does no good to argue about which wing you're on, because this morning, when the ducks came right at us, coming up off the water, and they were flying right at you, you and me and Stone, their right wing was on my left. They're flying right at me. Their right wing is on my left. Well, when they got past me and they were leaving, their right wing was on my right. My point is, you can't I'd go with to the, know what your point is because <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. I think you, I you can't is. go. You can't label people wings. It just depends on what direction they're going. Is all I'm interested in. You okay. see what I'm That's saying? Well, I like that I like point. That. That's right. Yeah. Well, you're right. just according on what direction they're going before you get down to the wings. Well, let me say this. Because <laughs> you're coming at you, his, his right wing is on your left, he goes past you, and his right wing is here's on your what right. I, it's by here, the way. Well, here's <laughs> what I noticed. Those that were coming at me, they didn't go far. Hey, hey, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so to prove your point, Martin Luther King Jr., in every bit of his belief system, would be considered a right winger today. That's correct. I mean, he would not be, he would be canceled. Yeah, he'd be canceled. <laughs> because of what he believed. The greatest civil rights, you know, leader of all time yep. would not fit in current wokeism. He appealed to people to put their faith in Jesus. Yeah. All men, God said, are created equal. Right. He just not show right. favoritism. He, look, he camped uh, out on that yep. and he won the day for his people he because did. of it. He went back to the Constitution, 
and he went back to the Bible, and he yep. said, "This is why all men, black or white, are, and he was right about the entire." Well, all why is it the redneck Kirk culture? I mean, people call me a redneck; it doesn't offend me whatsoever. Mm. Me either. No, I, I hear nobody say say it out there. I take it as a boost. <laughs> well, I told you where it came from before. Because there are people who spend a lot of time outside, right. and you get sunburned. You get the red net, net. which is what I'm saying. Farmers tan, you know, saying I, whatever I, I, you want. I'm not, I'm not offended. No, it doesn't me bother me in the least. Me either. But we're not. But we don't walk around looking for offense. That's what I'm saying. That's the difference. Yeah. Is the mindset. And, and so to be clear, if we're rednecks because we are outdoorsmen, the best you could hope for is they want to be called white necks. You know, computer, that will computer never buff. work. It'll never and work. Computer will... buffs because computer people, I notice, they're bright white. I mean, they're they're so white <laughs> because they never get out and get in the sun. The only way they get mm-hmm. sunlight is get vitamin D, and they take that. They say, well, that'll give me some sunlight. Because they're not going outside. They're bright white when you see them coming. Yeah. Neck and face, just white. And world-class <laughs> duck flares. Oh, they scare ducks from a mile away. The well, last time I saw Zuckerberg on one of those, you know, they was doing the zoom in. He looked like a, speaking of people inside a lot, he was like an android or something. He was like a, like the data on Star Trek. It, he didn't look like a real human being. Maybe be. he has become one with the computer. <laughs> Maybe so. Well, <laughs> it's, to it's your point. <laughs> the people, I mean, I saw, we had a cameraman today, you know, duck commander, seen him, young guy. Oh, so y'all yeah. got it on film even today. Oh, yeah. That's and impressive. He, he's real pale. He's one of these guys. I think he spends a lot of time indoors. But his name well, is Hunter. I don't know where it all went wrong. <laughs> but what my, my line to him was, because the first couple ducks that came in flared. Yep. Well, I looked down. Well, he's had this camera, but his hands were real white. I said, that won't work. And he looked around like, who, who me? I said, your hands, you're too white. <laughs> And he was looking at me, and I thought, is he going to be offended that I said he's too white? Yeah, no, I mean, that, Chase, you got to get woke. You can't be talking about how and, white people he was are, looking how red at they it, are, how black well, they are. Well, he was looking at his hands like, I, I, I can't. <laughs> what could I possibly what can do? I do? I said, gloves. He said, I don't have any. And Jay threw face paint. I just saw face paint come into <laughs> my vision. And so I saw him over there putting put it then they came in. I was like, okay, we, we can continue. But I'm like, man, let's just stick with Jesus. <laughs> that's, I mean, that, that's my, because everything is so offensive. Everything is on the table is what we need to change this vocabulary in, in the way we treat each other. Yep. And I'm thinking, well, maybe we're just too sensitive and we don't realize what we have in common, which is why I love what they sang here. You, you you made it. We're all under the umbrella of being made in the image of God. And I also like that they stood up that when they said, we can't help but speak about it. I mean, how could we not? Can't, can't help. You can't say And I thought about that, Jace, our, our uh, school of preaching verse. You remember it? Oh, Jeremiah yeah. 20, verse 9. That's first verse I learned there and i loved it it was our it was our theme verse for our class when we went to seminary it says but if i say and, and remember jeremiah unlike 40, 40 unlike, years of preaching uh, zero converts no converts i mean nobody was responded extreme you, persecution <laughs> this guy i've had some dry spells but not that long well peter and john they're seeing some results so i can understand why they're fired up but 40 years and nobody relentless responded. persecution that that you got to put in context That's these right. words Relentless. I mean, they are literally just <laughs> piling on him. Yeah, just haymakers every day. You're offensive. You're terrible. Which is why he wrote a book called Lamentations. We'll kill you, <laughs> and then he 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 pins this famous. So here's what phrase. he says I, in that backdrop. But if I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, which is what they've been telling him the whole time. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. His word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. Look, <laughs> so, yeah, I, 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 I bring I up. Had to proclaim the message. I've right. been there many times. I bring time. up yeah. one of the special brothers in my life who's helped me, Mr. McGuigan. 
But look, I've heard that verse. I've read that verse a hundred times, but I heard him preaching a sermon one time, and he quoted that verse. He said, <laughs> yeah, if I just... With the Irish accent. But he said, if I... If I say I'm not going to mention him or, or speak in his name, I can't help it. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> and it just chills, like hit the back of my spine. Even though he was quoting a verse I've heard my whole life, I, I sensed his passion yep. in his walk. He's like, the opposition is around me. But in that moment, I saw his, I saw his heart. He was like, I, I, I can't help it. Yep. I can't help but speak. It's a fire. I've been there and done that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a perfect way to end the podcast. So don't hold it in. Yeah, if you're driving down the road and you need to take this moment, say, I just can't help it. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, Subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.